What's up everyone? Today I'm gonna to introduce you to a very good friend of mine who is not very well known, lives in a small rural town, and works out of his bedroom. And he also, by the way, makes seven figures blogging. Yeah, seven figures. His name is Jeff Rose and he's the founder of Good Financial Sense and he looks just like The Rock. So today I invited Jeff on this channel to share nine things that he's been doing to be able to grow a seven figure business through blogging and YouTube. So some of the things he's sharing, you're gonna wait like, oh my God, it's gonna be some crazy magical thing. It's not gonna be that. It's actually gonna be some core basic stuff that maybe you forgot to do in your own business. Here are two examples. Number one, how the hell is Jeff creating content that's getting a shit ton of readership? Secondly, how does Jeff make the money? What are his different revenue streams? So Jeff's gonna share that and seven more things about how he's growing his business in the video below. Enjoy. So I started my blog back in 2008 and it took me about nine months to earn my first $100 from Google AdSense. But now I can finally say, finally, I'm making over seven figures on my blog every single year. The first thing that you better have is killer content. In my own blog, when I started my blog, it was pretty pathetic. I was writing 500 word blog posts on how to budget and how to invest money. And with 500 words, you're not gonna get a lot of information. You're not gonna get very deep on whatever those topics are. So eventually I started writing epic blog posts that were 2,000, 3,000, sometimes four to 5,000 words. And that's what I'm talking about with killer content. All right, the second thing that you gotta do is you gotta go beyond the blog. The best example I can give you is Pat Flynn from smartpassiveincome.com. Now Pat, he has an amazing blog with killer content. What Pat also has is an awesome podcast, but he didn't just stop at the podcast. He also has an amazing YouTube channel. He has books, he speaks at conferences, he has paid mastermind groups. Pat takes going beyond the blog to the next level. And with my own blog, my written content, like it was on point. We had the killer content down. But it wasn't until I started doing videos with YouTube and then my podcast and then when my book came out, that's where I started reaching people on so many different levels and that's when I saw the blog start to take off. But the one thing I want to warn you is that it can be so tempting when you're starting your blog to want to do all these different things. And I will tell you, it will drive you insane. So before you start branching out on doing all these different things, be laser focused with your main form of content. All right, the third thing that you're gonna need to have a million dollar blog is you gotta know something about SEO, search engine optimization. I also network with other bloggers to help me understand how SEO works. And because of that, I started ranking for some very lucrative keywords in my space. A lot of experts will claim that SEO is dead and you shouldn't worry or waste your time with SEO. Do not listen to them, but in the same breath, don't become obsessed with SEO. Another example I can give you in an entirely different niche is Dr. Axe. He ranks for some of the most lucrative keywords in the health niche. He ranks for chia seeds, tea tree oil, and the Himalayan salt lamp. He's now the number one health and wellness site in the country. All right, the fourth common characteristic of million dollar blogs that I see is having transparency. I'm talking about transparency where you're willing to share not only your greatest successes, but also your failures. A lot of bloggers now are also sharing how much they make with their online business, which is crazy. Another example I can give you in the personal finance space is Michelle from Making Sense of Sense. Michelle not only shares how much she's making, but she's also sharing what it's taking to grow her business, to build her business, the work that she's put into it, the hustle, and she also shares how she's traveling the country with her husband in an RV. I mean, it's a pretty amazing story. But it's that type of transparency that resonates with people, especially if you're willing to share the failures. All right, the fifth common thing that I see with these successful blogs is that there's a lot going on behind the scenes than you know. And what I mean by that is, these bloggers are building a solid team behind them to grow their blogs to get them to that next level. If you haven't figured this out yet, it's not just a blog, it's a freaking business that these bloggers have created. So to think of it just a one man shop, you're just kind of kidding yourself. Another example I can give you is Kyle Taylor who founded the blog, The Pay Hoarder. Now Kyle started this blog back in 2010 and in 2016 it hit Inc's top 5,000 list with over 20 million in revenue in 2016. But do you think it's Kyle doing everything for himself? No, he has around 40 to 50 employees that are helping out run this behemoth of a blog. All right, number six, 
you gotta have a loyal tribe. You wanna have a community that's willing to buy what you have to sell, that's willing to read what you have to write, that's willing to join any group, any Facebook group that you start. Biggerpockets.com, one of the top, if not the top, real estate blogs that exist. They have over 965,000 people that are a part of their community that all wanna know how to invest into real estate. That's pretty awesome. That's why it's so important to either engage with your commenters, your readers, your email subscribers, or creating an environment where they can interact with you. Whatever that is, give them an option to be able to connect with you on a deeper level. All right, number seven is having multiple income streams or having ways to diversify income from your blog. Now, when I started my blog, I talked about having Google AdSense and making my first $100. Yes! It wasn't until I started adding different banner ads and then got into affiliate marketing. Not to mention the fact I was still getting clients in my financial planning practice. These are all the different revenue streams that allowed my blog to get to that seven figure level. Another example we can check out is pinchofyum.com. Not only do they have their affiliates and their sponsored posts and all the amazing revenue streams they have from Pinch of Yum, but since they have a loyal community and an awesome tribe, they also have Food Blogger Pro. What this is is a community, a paid membership community for food bloggers that want to monetize their sites. So between the two, they have an amazing diversity of income streams. The biggest takeaway here is to have a diversity of, of offerings, whether that's promoting other people's products, promoting your own products, having that diversity in case something happens to one of those income streams, that would not be a good thing. All right, number eight is having a killer brand. When I think about somebody or if I think about a website, it's like, what do I think of when I think about them? Now, Lewis Howes is known for his podcast, The School of Greatness. But if you follow Lewis on social, the dude's always dropping inspirational messages that just make you want to be a better you. And with the School of Greatness podcast, he's interviewing people that he's aspiring to be, that we're all aspiring to be, because we want to be better, we want to be great. And having that solid brand just gives you that platform to be able to promote your products, your courses, your live events. So what does that look like? Is it your logo? Is it the content that you produce? Is it your production quality of your podcast or your YouTube channel? Just make sure there is some consistency from your blog to your social channels to your YouTube channel. Just make sure it all kind of makes sense and the dots connect. All right, the last one is own your space. With Good Financial Sense, I wanted to own the financial planning and investing niche. I wanted to make sure that when people came there, they knew that I was the subject matter expert on those topics. So whether it's SEO, health and wellness, food blogging, whatever your space is, you want to own it. Another cool example I can give you is a dude that doesn't just own one space, he owns two spaces and does it magnificently. Who I'm talking about is Darren Rouse from ProBlogger. So Darren, he's got the pro blogger niche down on his website, but just because the dude's not satisfied with one, he wants to do it again. So if you go to Digital Photography School, he has a blog that owns a photography niche. So how to use your camera, what cameras to buy, how to do lighting. It is one of the biggest and best resources for everything photography. So he doesn't just own his space in blogging, he owns his space in photography as well. And like, that's like double legitness. If you made it this far, you learned a lot from Jeff Rose. What I want you to do is go look up Jeff Rose on YouTube and thank him at his channel for putting together the video. Number two, I know you don't wanna miss another one of these videos, so go and hit subscribe and that little notification bell, ding, that are below, so you make sure you never miss my videos. I love you, dog. And number three, I wanna hear what kind of entrepreneurs you wanna hear from me next. Like, who do you wanna hear from? Real estate people, SaaS, e-commerce, veterinarians, whatever it is, leave a comment below and let me know what kind of entrepreneur you wanna hear from me next.